How many years have you served and what inspired you to join the Royal Air Force? For me, um, I have been in the Royal Air Force now coming up to 30 years um, in May. Um, I, I didn't really know a lot about the Royal Air Force. Um, I, um, as I was introduced to it at the time, um, I, you know, I, I, even with regards to my fitness, I, I've been lucky if I could, you know, if I could run a mile and a half. But since I've joined, you know, the, the many opportunities I've had, and, and you know, through sport and through travel. Um, so, as I say, it was, it was a friend that introduced me, um, and, and I didn't know a lot. I joined up in the ranks um, and really just um, you know, I worked hard at each level and just tried to work my way up through, you know, up through the, the ranks and then decided to take my commissioning. Um, and that's where I, you know, I, I sort of did the training um, and took all the opportunities. I did my degree. Um, in the Royal Air Force, um, and then I, as I say, I managed to get myself up to the rank of wing commander. I would never have imagined I would ever get to this level, um, but certainly looking back 30 years um, right from where I was then. Were you ever part of the Air Cadets or the University Air Squadron? My son is now in the Air Cadets, and, you know, and the opportunities he gets through the Air Cadets is it's amazing. Um, you know, he's, he's got to go up flying, he's got to do part of the Duke of, uh, Duke of Edinburgh, and he's gone up for sort of fun, um, you know, fun weekends up at RAF Aldergrove. So he, he has had loads of excellent opportunities, but as I say, I didn't, it wasn't really introduced to me, but that's so different now. There's so many, you know, this has really been pushed out, and these Air Cadets are like, nearly 50-50 with female, male. Um, so there, there's definitely a lot more awareness about the RAF Air Cadets. What do you enjoy most about your career in the RAF? And what have been some of your notable career highlights to date? Um, I, I have enjoyed working up through the ranks um, to my commissioning. Um, but I, I suppose the, the probably the most um, enjoyable piece is when I specialise in the air movements. Um, it took me on operations out to Iraq, to Afghanistan and the Middle East a few times, um, but also it's taken me on some fantastic um, exercises to places like Miami, Arizona, um, and locations, um, probably more challenging um, locations like Kenya and India. Um, but they, they, they have now, although they, them last two were now really hard work and really challenging, um, I've always come home you now very much you now having achieved, felt as if I've achieved so much and learned so much from these exercises. Um, and I say, I'll never get the opportunity, I've never got the opportunity to go, to go do these locations if I hadn't been in the Royal Air Force. Um, so you know, it's not every day you get to see the Taj Mahal um, as part of your work. So they, they have to be sort of the, the main highlights um, through you know, my travelling um, and, you know, and also my sport. But one of my most rewarding achievements was when I was recognised by the Air Commodore and received an accommodation for um, my um, work with the medical reserves. What kind of exciting opportunities have you had through your RAF career? Just being part of the RAF itself is exciting. Um, even whenever, um, just the opportunity to have taken up the senior nursing officer's post, I would never have been able to um, achieve that, um, I think, without having joined the RAF and the same with the role I'm in now. Um, my exciting opportunities have been pretty much focused around sport. As I mentioned earlier, um, I, you know, I couldn't really, I struggled to run the mile and a half when I first joined the Royal Air Force at 19, um, but I did have an interest in football and, and hockey and netball. Um, I was fortunate to get onto the RAF um, football squad um, and also to, you know, to, to be on, on the tennis team. Um, so that has taken me um, to, to America. I've played tennis out in Tampa. Um, it's also um, plenty of opportunities um, through skiing, where it's, it's, again, it's taken me all over the world. So you know, with regards to exciting, everything, you know, there's so many opportunities out there um, for women um, in the Royal Air Force um, through sports. Um, and it has, it's taken me around the world and I would never have had this opportunity if I hadn't joined the Royal Air Force. How does it make you feel to know you have achieved so much and been so successful? Firstly, I do feel proud and privileged you now to have the career and the opportunities I have had um, since, I've joined the, since I've joined the Royal Air Force. 
I never dreamed that I would ever get to the rank of wing commander. Um, as I had said, I knew very little about the Royal Air Force. Um, it was very male dominated when I joined, um, but this has changed significantly um, with all roles now open to females. So I've always felt part of the team. Um, I, I've struggled in the past to do like, fitness um, when I first joined the Air Force, but the Air Force has really, you know, really helped me. Um, the opportunities are there, you know, and they have, they have made me both you know, stronger, both mentally and physically, um, to the point where I, I was then competitive um, you know, in, in, in my sport. So they have given me that encouragement that, you know, along the way. Um, I do put my success down to hard work and tenacity. Um, there, now, the, and, and also absolutely showing respect to, to all. Um, I, now, I have worked at the lowest level, um, and now, so I feel I do have a good appreciation of what it's like. I would never ask somebody to do something I wouldn't do myself. Um, so, I, now, so I put it down to very much, um, I give everything 100%. If I'm going to do something, I want to do it right, and I want to be able to get as much enjoyment out of doing that as well. So... That, that's really how I, I think I have achieved in the Royal Air Force. And it's there for anybody that wants to and enjoys you know, traveling and doing sport and, and actually meeting people like yourself, you know, like-minded people um, that, you know, that you know, are passionate. Um, and it's more than just a job you know, to us. What's it like being a female in the RAF? As a female in the Air Force, um, I have always got involved um, and I've always felt part of a team. I feel there's just so many opportunities for women um, if they if they want to take them. Um, now, it really has changed significantly since I joined up in, in the 90s. Um, and now, there's no trade or branch that's not open to women. So really the sky, or should I say space, is, is the limit here. Well, there's no limit. Now, women can really do um, reach the top um, and have been doing really well. We have some very good senior officers. Um, so I, you know, I think you know, it's, it's brilliant being a female in the Air Force. I think it's, uh, there's so many opportunities. Um, yeah, I'd feel the same. Um, I can't see any difference in the way that the males are treated uh, and the females. Um, and I think yourself, you're a prime example of that, of how well females can do in the RAF. What advice would you give your younger self, knowing what you know now? To believe in yourself. I have a fear, and I don't know where it's come from, I have a fear of failure. I have a fear that if I take something on, that perhaps I won't, that I fail in it. So um, really to believe in yourself, and if you give it 100%, you're not going to fail. You're going to go. You're going to go and you're going to get it. So yes, that's what I would advise. Um, my career was so different. Um, so my younger self, I think I would look probably now to join in the, the RAF and doing my nursing that way. It would have um, given me so many more opportunities um, because I listen to the achievements you've done and where you've been and what you've done. And I, I actually didn't have that. Um, because, you know, I went straight into nursing from Civilian Street and stayed in Civilian Street for a long number of years. My advice would be to aim high. The Air Force prepares you for each level. I know when I joined up in the ranks, I never thought I'd get to the next level. Once I got to that level, then, then they prepared me for the next level. And it's just been this continuous, you know, challenging, stretching myself and, and, and aiming high. So I would say absolutely aim for the top from when you first come in you know, and, and put yourself out there. It may be a bit scary, but actually you will, you know, you'll get, um, you put the effort and you'll get, you know, you'll get that back. What words of advice would you give a fellow female looking to join the RAF today? I'd say go for it, girl. Um, don't feel that you're not good enough um, or that it's not for you. Um, the Air Force has given me so much confidence and so much belief in myself. Um, and you will get, you no, know, you put the effort and you, you, will, get, you will get the results. So you no, know, don't be put off because it, it's scary. You don't know what's involved. You know, get involved. Um, you know, it, it has so much to offer. And if I had to do it again, I, I absolutely would. And I would absolutely recommend it to my children and to my family and friends. Yeah, I would give the same advice to a female wanting to join the RAF. I would say, go for it. Look and see what trade there is available and what trade would suit you. Um, do a bit of research and ask questions, but definitely 
go for it because you'd never regret it. And that's it. There's there's so many different trades available you know, from from nursing, from admin right through to weapon technicians. No, there's so much now on, on STEM, on science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and, and there's so many opportunities. So no, find something that no, you enjoy and there'll be there will be a role for you in the Royal Air Force.